Good afternoon. I'm going to really take you through how our first step, serious step, in terms of using gamification at McDonald's to help with a deployment of a till system. And because of the success of that, gamification has become a really important and serious part of our total blend. So everyone knows McDonald's. Um, we have 1,250 restaurants across the UK. Uh, we serve 3 million customers every day, and we have 100,000 employees working in both company and franchise restaurants. Something you might not know is that we are also the largest employer of young people, and in fact, 50% of our population are under the age of 21. And we've just been talking about it, the way that they learn is very different. They want to experiment, they want to be in control, and they want to do it their way. You know, the chalk and talk that I experienced at school has, has gone. The other thing is that they um, obviously use technology, um, but technology is not a gadget they use, it is part of them. And anyone who's taken a phone from a 14-year-old will know that you've taken their soul. Um, there's no point of coming out of their room again because life is over. So it's a very important part. Technology also bombards them with loads and loads of messages and it's the loudest messages, I call it the Darwin effect. It's the survival of the, the best messages, the best piece of learning that they're going to buy into. So it makes it a very important piece. So um, McDonald's also operates in a highly competitive market. Outside of the US, it's the biggest market for casual dining. We also have a very, very low margin. So you know the pennies really do count. Um, and it's all about the experience and driving that customer experience. It's about delivering good food in contemporary restaurants that are convenient, um, delivered with fast and friendly service, and consistently. And keeping to evolving that experience is really important to us. So becoming digital in terms of the way we communicate customers is a major strategy. And the first part of that strategy was sorting out the back end of our IT in all our stores and putting in a till system. And that's when the challenge came to me because we have 97,000 employees that we needed to train on, train on this new till system. Um, that is an important tool when you're in front of a customer. And if anyone's used a foreign keypad, yeah, once that's, you know, those buttons are all in different places and you've learned something and you now have to relearn it. And previously when we changed our tools, that happened in front of the customer. The subject is also very dry. It's technical um, and potentially boring. Um, and it will be just in time. So the way the tills would be rolled out is the store would shut at midnight, the new tills would be put in place, and then the next day you are live with those tills. And in previous times we were learning on the job and we wanted to avoid that. And the most important thing is the customers, because the till system we were putting in was supposed to enhance their experience. So we had to make sure we looked after them. So I needed a solution. Um, shoulder to shoulder training would be too expensive and too difficult. So um, we were going to put some e-learning in. However, I wanted more. Um, so I wanted somewhere where by the time that store opened, the crew were confident enough to use that till. So I challenged um, Kineo to come up with something that was engaging. It was something that was relevant to the generation that we were, we were um, using. And it provided a really safe place to practice and learn. The sand pit, where people can have a go. So Kineo did a fantastic job. Um, and they developed a solution that I challenged them. It had to be as good as something you could download on your phone. It had to be something that people wanted to use. And like all good games, it has lots of interesting features to keep the, the, uh, the user involved. So it was all about serving customers. So you had 20 minutes, so we had to keep them engaged for 20 minutes and serve various customers with their orders. You had a unique score, and the score was based on how fast you were and how accurate you were. There was also opportunity to get bonus. Customers that come into us are at different levels. So we have the people that come in and ask a big, for a Big Mac with a large fries and a Coke. Easy. 
We have other customers that come in who have five, six people with them, different orders, special orders. So it gets more complex. And just like with any game, you want levels. So it had four different levels, and as you went through the levels, it got more complex. We all like a cheat in life, don't we? We always like a little bit to help, so the game had things built in to help you get to the next level. It had show me's, stop the clock, and rewind. Yes, yeah, so you had lifelines. Talked about the bonuses. Um, lots of bonuses to pick up extra scores. So it wasn't just about being fast on the till and accurate, it was also about the level of service that you delivered to the customer. Um, you had the beat the clock, and you also had the ability to um, get, get extra points for that great service. Um, you could also gauge how well you were doing. So the um, scoreboard, the satisfaction score showed you how satisfied the customer was. So if you were slow, it would go down to that red. Um, and you could also see from the customer's expression how well you were doing as well. So those were the visual clues that we were asking people to have a look at. And finally, it was all built in with lots of sound effects, booing, cheering, um, slurping, etc. So um, it was, it was a, a, a great tool. So I'm going to try and see if we can get this. So we're going to go into it live. And um, I brought some of um, my colleagues from Kineo. In fact, Paul led this project for me when he used to work for me, and then he went the other side. Um, so we're going to see if we can actually get it to play. We're up and running. So this is sort of the landing page um, of the game. And if we just click on start, we should get going. Okay, so you've got your queue of customers coming in at the top there. And you'll see the first one drop in. And if we listen to his order, we should hear what he's after. So your first customer's dropped in now. Rather than dumping straight into the till, what it's actually asking now is how we would greet the customers. So we've got some hospitality stuff in there as well. Mark can take you through how it work in a minute. There you go. Okay, we're ready to now take our first order. So the guy's going to... If Morning, you... let's see. Um, I think I'll have a bacon and egg bagel today. And can I also order an egg McMuffin? He looks a bit grumpy already, actually. <laughs> it's because you're behind the till, Paul. <laughs> if it was me, he'd be happy. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, can I also have two teas with that? He's impressed, Joe, look. He's quite pleased. Okay, for your teas. <laughs> So the, the, the till is exactly the same interface that the, uh, the crew would have. Um, so it's, it's as real as it can be. You have another question that will help in terms of the procedure piece. I'm having this order to save away. Ten pounds should cover the cost, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly the easiest way to do that. And, and you yeah. get your score. So the, the, the clock is, the, 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 the cup here is showing the amount of time you've got left, and you've obviously Hi, got your satisfaction. Right, um, can I have a medium big mac meal, please? You're going to get this wrong? Now, Joe did that on purpose, getting it wrong, actually, just to show you. She tells me to say. <laughs> Stars for you. Perfect. Very good indeed. Okay. Yeah. Um, so totally immersive. Um, and the, the most important thing of the, the whole. Right, I have a large 
We're shut. <laughs> there are only 20 customers. <laughs> right, are we back on the live one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the most important thing is the score. So the scores are unique, and it's what kept people coming back. So um, we decided to launch this softly. So the e-learning was rolled out properly and people knew that that was in place for them to learn. But I hadn't really told a lot of the business that we were playing with gamification. So we have a portal, um, we call it our lounge, it's for our crew, so we use it as a very key part of engagement. So we very quietly put it up on this portal. And I sort of got a hint that it, was, it had done all right with this because um, on that weekend, um, I decided to have a go. And my daughter, who was 11 at the time, caught me playing this game um, and doing it very badly. And that's why I didn't do that session because I probably couldn't have done the first one right. And um, she was getting increasingly frustrated with the fact that I was doing it wrong, and to the point that she said, Dad, why don't I do this for you so I can get your score up so you look good on Monday? And over that weekend, she actually learned at the age of 11 how to use a till at McDonald's. Um, and it wasn't just her that loved it, um, it went viral. And in the first five weeks, it had been played 50,000 times. Um, one of the things we wanted to create with it was a leaderboard, um, but because of t technical issues, we couldn't quite do that. So we created a um, template scoreboard that they could print out and put up in their crew room. But what was really nice about that was the crew took that scoreboard and actually then started pasting it on um, uh, Facebook. So they actually made it go viral through, through social media. So in terms of the results, I mean, one of the things that we found straight away was there was a distinct difference between um, stores that really engaged with this and the stores that didn't. And um, the, the nice thing was the managers then used it as a pull to encourage their crew with competitions to make sure they were engaged with that first um, go live. Um, the, the business results were also um, extremely good for us. Um, we were expecting in this period of change that things like speed of service might increase, um, customer complaints would increase, but our goal was to keep them static. Um, but actually what happened was speed of service decreased um, and our customer complaints decreased. And that was the functionality of the till that helped us achieve that, but the training helped us achieve it a lot earlier. Um, and that was matched out in terms of our mystery shopper scores that we have. The other thing that we saw was in that first year, we increased our average check by 15 pence. Um, so it doesn't sound a lot, but when you um, consider the 3 million customers we serve every day, it actually contributed about 23 million pounds to our overall sales. Um, it provided 90,000 hours of training um, our crew, when we, we surveyed, a lot of them didn't even realise it was training. They thought it was a game. And when we asked them about the training, they couldn't relate to it. Um, but they did this great till game, uh, which meant that we saved about half a million pounds worth of direct training costs. Um, but the beauty of it is it's still live. It's still out there. And to date, we've had sort of like a quarter of a million people play it. And we're still getting 8,000 plays a month. So it's been very successful for us. But actually what it did, it caused a catalyst for gamification across the organisation. So I had been talking about gamification, but people were like, I'm not quite sure whether we should be using this as a tool. Um, but it suddenly became the big thing that we wanted to do. So um, the first thing is our lounge gamified. So we use it a lot to help with engagement, particularly around new initiatives. So we launched some new uniforms, lots of interest in uniforms from our crew, but what we wanted them to know is that actually the uniforms were all recycled, and that was a part of our sort of like environmental message. Um, we also launched new service values, um, and again, we used a Candy Crush type of game to help bring those alive to the crew in terms of recognition. And it was part of a massive campaign. It wasn't just the only thing. So I want to now share with you a couple of things that are in the pipeline. So these aren't live, um, but I thought it'd be worth showing you how 
from a learning point of view, we're looking to take this a little bit further. Um, so a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, so the first thing is, you know, being a McDonald's manager is actually an extremely tough job. You have to make so many decisions in the moment. So retail is tough, but at, in a restaurant environment, not only have you got the service part, but you also have a mini factory that's cooking food. And as a manager, you need to make sure that you have the right people in the kitchen at the right time, in the right stations, to cook the product for the customers that are coming in. So it's all about the changing conditions. So we are looking to create a virtual world, a simulation, um, that will help managers learn how to make the right decisions. More importantly, make some mistakes in there, because actually it's from learning from those mistakes they will learn where to use and, and place their people. So it's a little bit like a um, football manager. You know, it's all about making sure that you get people in the right place at the right time. So that's in the pipeline. So this is really, really early days. Yeah, so we, we, we're in the process of looking to develop that further. Um, this is a program that is actually in test at the moment and will go live in our restaurants. Um, and it's our crew welcome meeting. Um, so at the moment, our crew welcome meeting, our orientation program, is an hour in a meeting. And then they have one hour of compliance training. That meeting it delivers all of our messages about our brand, about the do's and don'ts. And really, a lot of it is a tell. Um, and then they go off and they do their food safety um, or uh, piece of e-learning. The delivery of that comes down to the, the person in the restaurant. So you get varied amounts of delivery. So what we're looking to do is um, use some e-learning at the beginning of the program. Um, and that's not going to have any gamification in it at all. But that is going to free up time on our welcome meeting. Because what we're going to do is we have created a board game. Um, and the board game is a game that the new starters will play as a team. They will have questions that they will have to discuss. They will have challenges that they have to think about. But it's all related to their role in delivering great customer experience to our customers. Um, I was a, you know, really excited about the board game. I thought it was a new idea from McDonald's. Obviously very worried about using it with the net generation in terms of their use to... to, to techie stuff. But actually what's happened is they don't use this stuff very often, so this is new and it's really exciting. The most important thing is we are not telling them how they should, um, in terms of the role with customers, what are the behaviours. They are working that out for themselves through discussion. And that becomes really, really powerful. So we are seeing people who've been through the pilot far more customer focused and confident when they start in that first, first sort of like week. So it's, gamification doesn't have to just be around technology. It can be in other ways. So um, a couple of some pieces of advice if you are looking to use gamification. I think the first thing is very excited to get excited about gamification or the new shiny new thing. But it's really important that what you are using gamification for is the right thing, and it suits the need of the business and also the learners. Your learners are really, if they're young, they're going to be really net savvy. So they are going to be exposed to this gaming already. So your gamification has to be sophisticated. And that doesn't mean spending lots of money, but it means it has to be challenging enough to get them hooked and thinking. If you are going to use gamification across the business, so the internal comms team have really bought into it, make sure as, a, as someone from learning is you have a seat on that table because it's really important that we develop great games with great learning outcomes to one, get the return on investment, but also to make sure that the learners will be hooked into the next one. So um, just a summary, I think, you know, Gamification is a really important application in that blended approach. It's not the only way to do it, but it's, it's a really important part of that. For me, it allows that opportunity to try out, play, have a go, and learn. And that is the most powerful part of learning, is when you've, when you've worked it out for yourself. It also creates a pool to learn. 
You know, there's so many messages that these that people are getting now. We, as learners, we need to market what we do. We have to think about the product from a marketing point of view. And actually, if you do great design, it will mean that that gets pulled rather than us having to push that out. Um, and finally, um, gamification is fun to create and fun to do. So for me, it's something that I really love and enjoy to do. Um, so the best way to learn is, is have a go. So Kineo have very kindly um, going to host this game on their site. So you're welcome over the next couple of weeks to go in and have a play of yourself. So the details are up on there. Um, but, you know, have a go and, and enjoy. So before we move on to the panel questions, if we, has anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask Mark specifically now, while they're fresh in your head? <coughs> How long was it to develop the game from your specifications and requests? Um, it probably took about, it took three months. We had some slight delays with it because we were looking at this, this leaderboard. But it wasn't um, particularly long. It was about three months, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But one of the key things around it was that the TIL system was being developed yeah. at the same time. So as with any systems training, you kind of can't put the solution in place until you've got a stable system. So we were restricting to the panel. It's still around about three months, which is quite a for 20 minutes of quite high end learning. It was also quite interesting that I think quite a long way into development, we looked at. Um, we needed the hospitality pieces in there. So you know, the danger of the game was it was looking at making people very fast at doing the till. Whereas, you know, to Mark's point, it was about customer experience overall. So we, we, we sort of re-engineered those bits back in. So, so Anybody else have questions? Yeah. Uh, just a very quick one, Mark, about, um, I presume the till's a touch screen. Yes. And the game, presumably, well, at least in the demo, was through. But did that make any difference at all, or would you? Um, you think it's ideally, it would have been great if we had touch screens in our in our in our stores. But at the time, it was literally drag and you know with the, with the mouse. But hey, the, the 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 guys played it. Interesting about the, the the length of time. So our lounge, the average time people spent on a page was up until the game about a minute and a half, two minutes. What we hit with, our, with the game was you know, 17, 20 minutes. So they were engaged for that full 20 minutes in terms of playing the game. So, um, but it now works. So that's developed in Flash, so it doesn't work on um, a iPad. But if you use a Puffin browser, something that uh, Julie um, discovered, it will play on, on your, your, your iPad. So. <laughs> I think that might have just answered it, Mark. But were they, they were encouraged to do this in their lounge, which is in the restaurant. Is it at the back of the restaurant? Uh, no, I mean, yes, there's, there's PCs in the restaurant, but they have access to our lounge at home. So they were probably playing this mainly at home. But we know in the stores, that over when it became a, a big thing in the stores, that's all they were playing on the breaks was um, the game. Uh, yeah, that's answered my question. Yeah. So they, they enjoyed it enough to do it in their own time? Yes, yeah. Uh, are you looking to uh, roll this out into your other countries as well, or are they doing something um, similar? So some of the other countries have actually picked it up. Um, they need to do some development because they have different layouts. But yes, it's been uh, rolled out in some of the other other places. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, let's open this up now to talking about games and learning in general. So. Does anybody have a question that they'd like to put to Linda or to Mark? OK. So I have a couple of questions. I was making notes. So I'm, I've just got a couple of questions when we were going through. Linda, um, I wanted to know, what, where does your research go from here, what, what's the next big project that you're going to do? 
in terms of taking what you've learned so far forward? So what we will do next is we will try, um, we'll try in corporates. So we'll go to a corporate, we'll have um, an authentic task, workplace task, still focused on problem solving and collaboration. And then after that, hopefully investigate other skills, other complex 21st century skills. So this is the start of our research in this particular area. But we do lots of other learning research, but this is the game-based research we're currently doing. It's focused on 21st century skills and, com and new competency models, if you like, that includes the more complex skills. Um, I know you wanted to mention, um, I, mean, I don't even know if you remember, but tomorrow, if you guys, if anyone's in the Canary Wharf area, the International Think Tank is going to be focusing on what Linda just mentioned, and some of the innovation and motivation there. So feel free to show up to that, or just stay after, and I can give you the info. Separate, but they're highlighting some of the stuff that Linda mentioned. I just wanted to ask Mark as well, how did your, you've got mixed generations in the business, they're yeah. not all young people, so I wanted to know what was the reaction to some of your more mature members of staff? Yeah, so um, I think if you think about older people, technology change is even, even bigger um, and hadn't really thought about this until we were in the middle of it, but they really appreciated being able to practice through the game so that they were then ready for that when it um, was um, live and they were having to work at all. The other thing that was really nice was the younger people within the restaurant were helping um, the, the older generation um, to use it. I think we also have to remember the biggest, uh, I believe the biggest player of app games are middle-aged women, apparently. So they're the biggest fans of Candy Crush. So gamification is, is relevant for all, um, but they, as I said, they really appreciated that safe environment because they would get far more flustered on the, on the front counter. How many of your um, employees slash users feedback ideas on how to improve the game or use cases for expanding? Um, through our lounge, we use our lounge for crowdsourcing as well. So any sort of um, learning intervention we're looking at or, or want feedback on, we will ask uh, questions through that and we will poll. Um, on, on, the, on the site, they have the ability to, to rate the site and leave their comments. So um, you know, some of them were leaving their frustrations because they couldn't get to level four and they couldn't work it out. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we very much take their feedback and they're very much involved within the whole design process. Sorry? Uh, well, uh, you, that is actually coming. So um, uh, there's some restaurants out there that are our concept restaurants. So yes, we are going to be introducing um, self-service kiosks and ordering through apps. So that's all part of that digital strategy. So that's rolling out in the next few months. Um, so, so that was a really interesting debate that we had and was one of the reasons why I, I, I just put it up on our lounge. Um, so there was a piece of e-learning that was something that we were tracking, but um, I think we have to get to a space where if you create a piece of learning that's, that's relevant and people enjoy doing, they're just going to go and do it. Um, so. Do we need to know that they've done that piece of e-learning or that piece if they're doing the job and they're doing it in the right way? Um, so in stores where before they were going live and as they'd gone live, the managers were directing them to go off and play. So they were encouraging them during the breaks to play. And once they'd had a go, they, they got hooked. Um, but yeah. Mark, I just wondered if I just wondered if you'd like to just share about the, them setting up their own leaderboard on Facebook. Yeah, so yeah, so I mentioned that they did set up their own leaderboards. And um, again, at the time, we didn't have a, a social media platform for them to share. Um, but they created their own um, Facebook pages within the stores. And that's what they were using to publicize their, their, 
their, their store, scores across the board, um, offering to help other employees if they sort of like did their shifts on a Saturday night. So they were using incentives to sort of like share some of the, the knowledge they'd gleaned as they were going through the game. Yeah, and I would like to concur with, with Mark on that because the students who went through our trials actually asked for, could they set up an inter-school um, leaderboard for going through iLearn? Now, we had a limited budget for the trial, so we couldn't roll out another one, but it, the students actually requested um, a leaderboard and to maybe roll it out to schools nationwide. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'll speak loud. Um, in the problem solving, I think it's fantastic when you're looking at those kinds of skills. But whilst they may be able to solve that problem with them, say, how confident are you or how are you going to evaluate this and transfer those skills as well as you Well, that's why when we were evaluating the problem solving activity, we looked for generic steps, process steps that we, we applied to any problem in any context. Typically, we cycled through a number of steps. So we, we pull back and we looked at the, the process steps for solving problems. So by inference, although it might be different, we were saying that this could be applied to other types of problems in other contexts and other domains. But again, um, we would need to verify that. You would need a second experiment to to verify that. But that's why our metrics, if you like, were high-level process um, metrics. John? <clears throat> I would expect that the 16 and 17 year olds had no issue navigating the immersive learning environment. They had absolutely none. And what, what was amazing for us was um, we had expected, we thought it might crash and burn for one reason, that we you know, being a research centre, um, our funding was limited for this trial. We were lucky to be able to do it, but we used OpenSim, and OpenSim can be very clunky at times and would not reflect the high fidelity games that they would be used to playing. So we had thought that they would not engage with, with the game whatsoever because of the clunky environment. But somehow, the, the engagement from the game overrode that. They didn't comment. They didn't say anything about how clunky it was, how slow it was in places. They just engaged it, and they navigated that world so easily. So that's why we thought, finding it so easy to navigate, that they would go off piste and go to the other areas of the world. But they didn't, and it, it, it surprised us. You might have a different set of challenges with the other one. We had put in a lot of additional navigation things really? to suggest that they don't get they don't get overly frustrated by that type of immersive environment. Interesting. That would be interesting to see, um, just to see if we can replicate this, we will have to go, not to introduce too many variables, we'll have to go with the existing one, but it would be interesting to see if that does get into Yeah, yeah. So, what for you, Mark? Um, are you going to create more game Yeah, no, so it's, it's definitely a um, big part of our strategy. So, um, you know, a lot of it comes down to um, resource and cost, but you can do it cheaply. I mean, the, the game that Kineo, um, they kill me for telling them, but it cost us 40,000. I'm not saying that you could get that for 40,000 now, so that wasn't particularly um, high cost and has provided um, a huge amount of value. Um, in terms of the, the um, simulation, I'm hoping that I can take something, our marketing department have created a virtual store that they use to look at, um, put advertising up to see how that looks and how you can walk through that. So we're looking to use that asset and then work with a partner to build the game piece around it. So, so just on that, so I was hoping you were going to touch on your boss. Um, so when this came about, was this your idea or someone in your team? Um, so it, it was. I, I asked um, uh, Joe to um, from Kinyo to develop that. So yes, it was. It was my. So, so talk to the right person. Now. Yeah. So um, from your perspective, did you have any? Because there is, you know, normally there is a cost. <coughs> so if you were giving advice to any other employer that was looking to go this route, and as you've been through the 
process firsthand. These were tips you would give to help people get that buying from above for um, funding of this. Um, well, I, I was lucky because um, the IT knocked on my door. Normally, it's me knocking on their door. So, and IT always have the budget. Um, so they were brave enough to let us go off and have a go. As I said, I think you know there was scepticism about using gamification. Um, you know, and a lot of my challenges is is making sure that you know senior people know that they're not necessarily target audience anymore, and it's how you know younger uh, learners want to to. Um, learn. Um, we just did it, and the results of it is what's helped sell gamification into into the market. But I think there's now quite a lot of evidence out there that would help anyone in terms of showing the impact that um, gamification does, particularly you know the research here. Um, is there a correlation to the best performing gamers and the best performing restaurant? So, yeah, so we, did, we didn't, um, in, in early days, we, we definitely saw that. So stores that had engaged with it, and they, the, the crew had sort of like Facebook pages, et cetera, they had no problem in terms of that transaction. Um, stores where it hadn't happened, um, they had a lot more technical <coughs> problems, but they weren't technical problems. It was user error. Um, we called it picnic problem in chair, not in. Um, so. No, I mean it would have been. That's why we weren't wanted a scoreboard. But unfortunately, we didn't have that. But we now have the ability to have a scoreboard. So that's we're looking to to revamp the till game, and that will be potentially something that we we will put on it. But yeah, but they were doing it through Facebook. But just, just on, sorry, but just on, on that topic, um, the top scorer, if you like, in, in, in our research was a girl who, she was from a disadvantaged school, and on the way to the trial, she said to her teacher when they passed Google, all the smart people in the country work there, and uh, this student was always in the principal's office, didn't engage with learning, didn't do well at school. so. Um, the teacher was in the world outside, was observing how she was solving the problem, was saying, I don't believe it. First of all, I didn't think she would finish the task. I have never seen her so engaged. And she came out with a smile on her face. So it was almost as though this gaming engages people we don't expect to excel. And we saw that her um, problem solving skills so creative, were way ahead of anybody else's. She'd obviously learned to compromise at school and find smart ways around things. So that was a totally unexpected finding for us. And again, it says a lot about um, are we focusing on the wrong things completely um, in teaching and learning at schools at the moment? Are we not looking for these latent um, skills that people have? That, organizations and businesses benefit from. But that was back, who is the best gamer? Or who, who is the best problem solver? The most unexpected people sometimes are. No, I don't think so. Compliance testing would be the best way to do any sort of compliance testing, because people wouldn't realise they're being, doing, being tested. No, I, I don't, no. And if I do, I just challenge someone like Kinio to sort it out for me. <laughs> Everybody's, if there's no more questions, I think we'll wrap this session up. And I hope you'll show your appreciation for Mark and to Linda for their. <laughs>